NFL figure you'd want to watch a game with in honor of reports that Sean McVay was courted by Monday Night Football for this year. Ask me the question, Chris, to determine pick number one. All right. Rodney Harrison, who you sit next to every Sunday, is one of only two members in the history of the NFL of the 30-30 club. 30 sacks, 30 interception. Who is the other member of the 30-30 club? Jameis Winston doesn't count. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Nope. Thanks. 30 career sacks, 30 career interceptions. I would say it's your former teammate, Rondé Barber. Ooh, good guess, but it is not. Uh, that hit, hit. Wow. I know. I know. Uh, it is a Ray Lewis. One Ray Lewis. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know. I know. How in the hell do they have 30 interceptions? Yep. Rondé was in the 2020 club. I know that. Something. Uh, so. It's pretty special. I think he ended up with 28 sacks, so he right. just missed out. All right, so first pick. Here we go. Go, go ahead. Take the pick. I know you're going to take. Go ahead. Who do you go think ahead. I'm going to take? No, just tell me who you think I'm going to take. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You take it. You take it. I'm taking just Andy Reid. I'm taking Andy Reid. Wow. Didn't expect that, huh? Wow. No. Yeah. I mean, come on. Andy Reid watching a football game with? First off, you know we're going to have a spread. Like, the food is going to be uh, plentiful, right? <laughs> But he's going to eat it all. Well, That's okay. The thing. I'm big and You're strong. You're not getting any. I'm going to push his big butt out of the way and get some too. He's not going to just boss me around in the food line. <laughs> but then, you know, Andy is just got such a great, comfortable way about him. I feel like he'd be one of those guys I could sit in the recliner next to and we would just hit it off like we'd been friends forever, even though we've only talked a handful of times in our life. And then he's a great storyteller. You know, between the stories with Brett Favre and Patrick Mahomes and things like that, I just feel like I'd have a, a grand old time. I'd be right at home. So I'm picking Big Red. I'm stunned. I know you I are. I'm stunned. I am shocked and I am appalled. You have changed, <laughs> Chris. You have to go back and reevaluate your priorities as you approach your own 40th birthday, which is coming up very, very soon. How do you not take your guy and my guy, Aaron Rodgers? He's got scotch. He's got tequila now. I drink scotch. I drink sipping tequila as well. See, here's the thing, and Aaron Rodgers would never admit this, but I'll go ahead and say it. Other than the obvious, you know, physical differences, like he's got real skill and I don't, I think he and I are a lot alike. I think we have the same sense of humor. I think we look at things the same way. And I think one of the reasons it drives him crazy is I know how to get right into that little nugget inside of his chest and poke at it, right? Yes. Because I, I just know, I know what makes him tick. I know how he thinks. I know how he operates because I'm the same way. I think we'd have a hell of a time after he beat me up. I, I, but we, I you know, can the see scotch it. And the scotch. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And, and also, he would say in a private setting – what he really thinks, what he believes. You'd find out what he thinks about the different players and what he thinks about who has the skills and who doesn't and where someone makes a good decision, a bad decision. And he wouldn't sugarcoat it. And I don't sugarcoat it. So I think we'd have a hell of a time. I, I mean, I, I actually agree with you. I think you would. You're both, like, very cerebral, quirky. Yes, hold a lot of things in because you want to get people back and do all that so you're right you guys would have so many snarky comments together after a few drinks who knows what the hell it had he might be happy he might by the end of that that game he'd be sitting there helping you snarky comment snarky comment paste copy and you guys would be like really best buddies it'd be unbelievable um okay I'm, I'm staying on the coach thing here a little longer just because I, I don't know those are the ones I find most intriguing I think the next one I'm going to is Sean Payton I'm going with Sean Payton. I mean, first off, I, I love Sean Payton. His attitude, you know, he wears his heart on his sleeve. Whatever kind of is in his brain, he kind of spits it out, whether he thinks it's going to, you know, cause some turmoil or not. If he believes it, he'll say it, you know. And I think he's the kind of guy, too, we sit there, we can really get into some X's and O's. I would love to pick his brain. Like, okay, they're breaking the huddle. You know, what are you looking at here? What are you expecting? All of those things. To me, he's one of the great offensive geniuses in the history of the sport. Has an edge about him like a Bill Parcells, too, where I feel like, you know, me and four-letter words and everything, I could just let it fly all day long and we'd have fun. And, uh, yeah, you know, we'd have, you know, some good New Orleans desserts. And I think Sean would kick, throw back a few drinks, too. And I like that, too. So I, I, I'm definitely putting Sean Payton towards the top of my list. Well, we saw that during the draft he had all sorts of uh, 
snacks and candy yeah. items on the table. You know, none me. of which were NFL approved, which was uh, a little, a little subtle, a little subtle message. To I could the get Thou the munchies, Mike. List that was circulated. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Bill Belichick with mine, and I'm surprised he's lasted this long on the board. Because if you want to know what's really happening in front of you, and they say all the time, you get him away from football as it relates to his own strategic interests, and he's a different guy altogether. I, I think that uh, you know he would break down in expert detail everything that's happening, a full and complete understanding of why a team is doing a certain thing, why they should have done it, what they should have done differently, what they should do here, what they shouldn't do here. It, and, and once he got going, it, it would be far more interesting than anything you're ever going to hear anywhere else. I, I mean, like, yes. I agree. But, oh, all right, the reason I didn't pick him is because I think there's a good chance you could be sitting there for three hours and nothing said either. That's that's why I picked him. He, he might not say crap to you. He might just sit there and keep looking at you and going on to Cincinnati, on to Cincinnati. <laughs> so that's why I didn't pick him, even though I know it would be very intriguing to, you know, pick a guy like that's brain. And, you know, one thing, one thing that happens, yeah. right? one thing that happens right. in press conferences, if you like every once in a while, he gets asked a question about some arcane football thing and he just goes for 10 minutes. I think if it's disconnected to his strategic interests, he will talk and talk and talk about football. I would agree with you with that. I, I, I felt like that way in my interview process with Bill, that he was very loved to talk about that type of stuff. And uh, he's a historian of the game, as we know. And if you've seen those shows with the NFL 100, all right, I got to go to one player here. I've been thinking about like, who are the crazy players in football that I'd want to watch a game with? You know, I've thought of the Derwin James and the Jamal Adams and Melvin Ingrams and Jalen Ramseys of the world, but I, 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 I got it. George Kittle, all right? George Kittle is who I want to watch the game with. I mean, first off, it's constant entertainment. There's not going to be any, like, commercial break. I mean, it's going to be commercial. Let me talk to this crazy freaking dude over here. Who knows what he'll do? And, you know, I just think we can have a lot of fun, talk ball, be silly, be guys. I mean, he's just, to me, one of the more electrifying personalities in football right now with a handful of other guys. I think Kittle kind of stands out to me. He's kind of the new age Gronk, right? And uh, I just think that would be fun just to, to be there and be around him. You know, if we were going all-time unlimited, John Madden would have been my first pick, second pick, and third pick. And I just want to mention him because, really, he's on my he list too. the way we all process and understand football. But I got to go with kind of a hybrid between Aaron Rodgers and Bill Belichick. And it's your guy, John Gruden, mm. right? Because he's got the depth and the knowledge, but at the same time, he's going to criticize everything he sees. <laughs> Even when it goes well, he's going to find a way to criticize and say they could have done it better than the way they did it. And he'll have that snarl on his face the whole time. And uh, during the commercial breaks, we'll go back and break down the things that had happened during the drive that just ended. So give me, give me your guy, John Gruden. Uh, for, uh, you know, that uh, three hours or longer of sitting there watching the game and then breaking it all down after. I hear that. He'd be fun. He'd have a lot of jokes. He could kick back some beers. He'd be funny as hell. He really would. He's one of the greatest storytellers I've ever been around. You know, and that's where, I mean, we're doing this in, in light of Sean McVay, who was also on my list. McVay would be one of those guys I'd put on there, too, I mean, that we should mention because his play recall and all that stuff, I mean, He's kid kid genius, as we've talked about. So, uh, yeah, there were some good names to pick from here. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.